I was off at day one of Bloomberg's New Energy Finance Summit in London. It was uh, focused on oil and gas a lot today. So three takeaways. When to pivot, blue hydrogen and carbon capture. First one, when to pivot. It was Richard Chatterton from Bloomberg New Energy Finance. Kind of went through a, a good dose of reality in terms of the challenges facing oil and gas companies today. And as they go to move to the energy transition and move away from fossil fuels, when do they do it? And he called out three categories of companies today. Those that are doing nothing and just prolonging their business model, most of the US majors, most oil and gas companies worldwide that are starting to make the transition and make investments and uh, planning, and then companies that have already made the pivot, like Orsted here in, uh, in Europe. But he went through, you know, the dilemma they're facing is that, well, there's still an oil and gas market. They still need to invest in order to meet that demand over the next 20, 30 years. But when do they stop investing? When do they, um, when do they transition away? But they still need the cash, and if you like, coming from the oil and gas, so they can make the investments into the renewable side. So it's a tough one, but it was a good, good business presentation. Second one, blue hydrogen. It was uh, Massimo Mondesi from INI called out the role that blue hydrogen can play. Now, blue hydrogen is basically like grey hydrogen. It comes from natural gas. But you capture the CO2 that's created in the process and you use things like um, um, steam methane reforming and, and, and. I need to go off and look at that because, to be quite honest, the way it was presented was that that kind of technology is ready. Um, but that leads me on to the third one, carbon capture. It was uh, Bob Dudley from the Oil and Gas Climate Initiative called out. And many of the oil and gas execs from Shell, Ine, uh, Repsol, you name it, that we're on today, called out the need that as oil and gas is not going to go away, we need carbon capture technologies. We do. We actually do. And one last fact. It was Seb Hindest giving the overview of their uh, new energy outlook 2020. He made the comment of the impact on transport of not shipping as much coal around as the demand for coal goes away. And it was like 50% of the rail traffic in China, 40% of the rail traffic in India, and 31% of the rail traffic in the US is shipping coal around. So imagine the impact on the carbon emissions of the rail industry when a, most of that requirement goes away. Interesting, huh? Talk about a win-win.